And thank you, Alvaro, and thank you to all the minds behind this great project. And above all, I would like to thank you for involving us in this project. Um, this is the last presentation, so we will try to do our best to make it as lively as possible. It is a duo presentation, so stay focused because we will be bouncing the ball between the two of us. Um, we have been talking about taxpayer rights and there is a wide consensus on the need that the digitalization process and tax authority big brother powers go along with a set of taxpayer rights. We have been talking a lot about this in these two days conferences. So now, which is the state of art? Um, please, the slide, um, the next slide. Uh, I think you need the, the, the second, the number two. The right? second, yes, the second yeah. slide. Uh, the, the one which has has titled the state of art. We are we are all in the state of art. Yes, we are watching that one. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know why I cannot see it, but it's it's not important. Um, so, which is um, the state of art? Uh, not much, to be honest. Uh, we have um, this recent, quite relevant communication from the. Um, from the, uh, the European Commission, and uh, which is a proposal for a joint solemn declaration between the European institution. And this would set a shared political intention to citizens, businesses, public administration and policy maker based on common European values. Uh, this is a quite interesting document, but of course it is dedicated to um, general citizens, not in particular to taxpayers. Uh, the same happens at the national and often at re regional level, as uh, many charter are provided and general citizen digital rights are listed. Uh, of course, we have also the national charters and bills of taxpayers' rights. So in this case, we have the opposite situation. We have taxpayer rights, but they are not updated to the digital transformation process. Of course, uh, regarding international, um, at the international level, we have the international European principle and the corresponding case law. Uh, next slide. Uh, please. So why should we um, think of a digital government taxpayer charter? Um, on the one hand, this would be an expression of the reciprocity principle, because as long as the modernization uh, process of um, tax administration goes ahead, we also need the modernization of taxpayers' rights. This would lead to a certain degree of certainty and a, a quite um, an important level of minimum harmonization at the international um, in the international scenario because the case law in the matter has not been uh, brief enough so far this is another reason why we need may we might need a, a charter and this also implies two important consequences. On the one hand, the charter would be an element for building um, the public opinion, consensus and trust in digital transformation. And this is also underlined in the European proposal that I mentioned before, uh, whose motto is putting people at the center of digital transformation. So public opinion trust is quite an important element for the digital transformation success. And last but not least, the uh, digital taxpayer charter would be a driver for an international taxpayer bill of rights. Everybody knows that um, the, in, the, in, the, in the international scenario, there is 
uh, we have been going a lot ahead with uh, uh, the fight to tax fraud, tax evasion, but there is a complete silence on the side of taxpayer rights. So the dig digital rights could be uh, the driver for a modernization also of taxpayers' rights in general. Uh, next slide, please. And now uh, Francesco will be taking over from here. Hello, everyone. <coughs> Thank you, thank you very much for inviting me and uh, for the excellent organization of this uh, of this workshop. Uh, well, many of the issues we are addressing have been touched on during the conference and uh, by Silvia. So I will focus on some specific topics, uh, partly the Jure Condendo. Uh, the first question, uh, the first question is strictly linked to the second one. Uh, why does the right charter in place or proposed are not sufficiently protective for taxpayer? Um, but the answer is quite simple, because uh, taxpayer citizens uh, have a number of basic rights as well as obligation in relation to their government and uh, its tax authority. And the tax authority are no exception, and most countries have legislation governing taxpayer right and obligation in relation to taxation. The problem is. Uh, uh, that the taxpayer is also a citizen, but not only a citizen. And uh, the protection needs of tax law are very specific. For example, uh, the tax procedure are administrated as the administrative procedure, but marked by specific uh, requirement and, uh, and needs. This is, and this question is strictly linked to the second one. What is the problem? Firstly, it's clear uh, the charter are designed in, in a historical period that did not contemplate digitalization. But, however, this uh, conclusion, this assumption is not entirely true because national charters, for example, in Italy, as uh, there is uh, in Italian language, uh, Statuto dei diritti del contribuente, uh, provide principle and guideline uh, that, of course, must also be applied with reference to digital procedures, digital acts, and the digital transaction in general. Uh, for example, the right of being informed, uh, the right to be assisted and heard, the right to, to, uh, to, to, to legal certain, certainty, for example. Clearly, uh, the digital world introduced new problem with reference in particular to the transparency and the accessibility of the technical procedure. For, for example, the creation of uh, administrative acts uh, the content of these acts and the quality of the information provided. Um, this is a new problem, a, a technical problem also, not only a legal problem, but also a technical problem. And the information uh, for the taxpayer is not completely clear uh, in this uh, historical period. But I think uh, a good starting point uh, would uh, therefore be to amend the existing legislation in a more specific way, in, in the digitalization perspective, uh, with reference to, to the old right. Please, the, the next slide, Silvia. Um, okay, another point that we should address while thinking of um, this, char this futuristic charter is if is if we uh, should just adapt all rights to the new digital environment. Uh, of course, we have been talking a lot about these in this today's conference, so the rule of law, right to access, right to challenge, right to present, communication, right to a proper hearing, and so on. Or also we should shape new rights. Uh, to be honest, it's quite difficult to imagine brand new rights. So I, I had to put among the new rights, the, the data protection rights and all uh, the limits to data collection, which are, cannot be considered uh, really um, entirely new rights. At the same time, if we think, for instance, the right of avoiding um, all uh, the uh, digital bias caused by algorithms, algorithms uh, even this is, cannot be considered a new uh, right as it is an expression of the principle of non-discrimination or, or fairness. Um, so um, it is quite hard to imagine new rights. Um, another question could be if we should take into consideration the so-called ethic by design. 
um, ethic by design is an approach which, which is usually used in the research uh, methodology and implies uh, an immediate updates between ethical principles and rights and, um, and research. Um, it is quite interesting because I think it could be a source of inspiration just because mo most of the principles such as transparency, accountability, uh, fairness uh, are quite can be considered quite familiar for our context. So it could be uh, a source of in inspiration for the uh, principle and the immediate up updating of the um, values inspiring the uh, hypothetical charter. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, uh, this is one of the central points of this problem, and it was also mentioned by Professor Marta Villar yesterday afternoon. Uh, in the course of uh, uh, recent years, it's clear that tax law has been dominated by a continuous increase of multi-level source of law in, in a broad sense. Yeah. And uh, also uh, the clear distinction between binding law, um, so-called our law, and uh, um, soft law has also been significantly reduced. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's uh, well known the role of the VCD and the role is paradigmatic in this respect, and, the, and at the same time, uh, the European political difficulties in regulating tax matter have emerged in the, in the last year. Uh, one example, uh, one example, the extraordinary experience of uh, base erosion and profit shifting project induced national induced national legislator to make. Uh, uh, significant legal change without any specific obligation to do so. Uh, for example, there, there was an, uh, an ancient study of the VCD in 1990, over 30 years ago, suggested the implementation of uh, general chart of taxpayer rights and obligation. And I think uh, uh, this path seemed to be one of the one uh, of that could give the best result also with the regard to, of the preparation of the charter of the digital right on the taxpayer, or the, the I'm sorry, the ta taxpayer, and, and so in this case, this of law I think is the better solution in the historical period. Clearly, uh, the role of individual legislator will remain absolutely crucial, especially in in, in areas of exclusive domestic jurisdiction. But uh, it's very, very important, uh, uh, this uh, implementation of national legislation within a framework of, of clearly defined European and international principle and, and, uh, and guideline. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last point, uh, um, a starting point, is know that digital transformation developing is not predictable. And uh, uh, it is therefore necessary to understand what is uh, the best regulatory model. Uh, in the literature, American literature, Anglo-American literature, is well known the distinction uh, between standard and rules, the, the, the so-called standard versus rule, versus rule uh, literature. Um, and there is a broad agreement uh, that uh, lawmakers cannot effectively uh, uh, foresee all of the particular uh, circumstances to which their law could apply. And, uh, but uh, it's at the same time well known that tax law uh, is characterized by detailed rule, but uh, it's widely accepted that in unpredictable and constantly evolving areas, a regulation based on standard, for example, uh, general, clause, clause, general clause and principle in general uh, is more efficient. And the debate uh, in tax matter of the dichotomy between case by case and principle based legislation uh, is uh, also well known. For example, in the field of international tax law, in uh, the fight of tax, tax avoidance, international tax avoidance. And I think 
the digitalization of tax law is paradigmatic in this in this case and uh, in my opinion uh, legislation based on the standard in this period is uh, is more efficient than uh, than the, a, a, a really detailed uh, um, a really detailed legislation model. The, Silvia, the next slide. Okay. Um, in this uh, futuristic chart, shall, shall we only think to passive rights or also active rights? Uh, by passive, I mean um, oppositional rights, so uh, the case in which taxpayers aim at preserving uh, their situation against tax administration powers. And active, uh, I mean, uh, claim right. So the possibility to imagine that the taxpayer has, for instance, the right to receive digital reimbursement, to, to present digital communication requests. And this, of course, would be uh, an ideal situation, uh, an ideal hypothesis in the chart of the future. And this goes directly to the uh, um, to the question that I highlighted, do taxpayers have the right to good digital administration? Of course, I think yes. Um, the European Court of Justice has um, designed this right in some uh, case laws, and even recently, um, I just want to mention one of the most recent cases, such as the CHEP, um, the Court of Justice. Uh, put the attention on the balance between taxpayers' rights and obligation and design the right to a good administration. So if we decide to modernize taxpayer rights, of course, we should also take into, in, into consideration uh, a good, the right to a good digital administration as balance uh, between uh, the passive and the active side of uh, taxpayer rights. Um, now I'm going, uh, next slide please, uh, I'm going to the last part of my, uh, my part of the presentation and I will just, uh, I would like just to underline that we, there are of course non-codifiable rights which are really important. In particular, I would like to stress the fact that even imagine in, in ideal charter some um, paramount preliminary issues should be addressed. In, in particular, they deal with uh, digital culture, both on the side of tax authorities and on the side of tax administration, um, on, the, on the side of taxpayers. And of course, uh, also the digital right awareness um, by taxpayer is also an important issue that should be addressed if we want to implement the tax, futuristic taxpayer um, digital rights uh, charter. So uh, now I, uh, next slide please, and Francesco will conclude our presentation. Um, Francesco, non si sente? Micro, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, conclusion. Uh, it's not uh, easy to, to, to give uh, some conclusion because uh, um, there are uh, some questions that you recondendo in this area. It's clear. But uh, the state of art uh, digital rights charter are designed for citizens but not for taxpayer. But uh, general charter of taxpayer right, right uh, for example, uh, general principle must be applied with regard to the digital areas and scenario and to digital tool of tax authority. But this is at national level. The uh, Jure Condendo, multi-level source depending on different taxation area and, and needs. And, but I think that the, more, the most relevant experience is the OECD experience, the soft law experience in the field of BHC project that set an, an, an excellent present, uh, precedent for, uh, for the implementation of, uh, um, of digital uh, rights uh, for taxpayer. But we have uh, a, a, a more difficult for political reason in the European legislation 
but uh, uh, nowadays the implementation of national charter of the spray right could be an, an, an initial step really important. Uh, what is the, the, the best regulatory model? The re regulatory model? In my opinion, uh, the unpredictable of digital transformation lies for a model founded on general clause or principle uh, and uh, principle that is more uh, consistent than the rule. But this, uh, this is only a conclusion that you recommendo and we, I, I, I hope we, we will uh, try to study in depth this problem uh, and at, also at an institutional level. Thank you for your attention.